And we are back, episode 55 of Journey to a Million here on this Wednesday night. Myself, Drew Skyver, with the full Journey to a Million squad. We're all back here. And I mean, when I say we all are, I mean, Zach and I were here last week. Jared, unfortunately, was feeling a little sick. Jared, feeling better now these days? Yeah, a little better. Still got a cough. Right, good good to hear. Vacation. Good to have you back. Yeah. Zach, of course, is going to say something snotty at you, but... Um, How's it going, Zach? Uh, looks like you're in, at the home setup, or you know you're no longer at school, so uh, a little tired. Hopefully, I can uh, get through this awake. But yeah, okay, come on. Um, but you know, I'm doing well. Also, in case anyone asked, I, well, it seems you two didn't ask, but nobody did. Um, no. You know, I'm just. I was thinking you know, before we came on the She's air. I'm just thinking about. Episode. <laughs> it seems like you know. I don't know. I just I'm thinking about the Jacksonville Jaguars after their win. I took them last week in team picks, not to my own horn, but you know, Zay Jones getting double digit He's targets again for that. Yeah. Evan Ingram, not no, not to speak. Evan Ingram, that's a guy Jared traded for. I thought. Did you yeah. trade away, Jared? I traded Son. Austin Hooper away. No, I traded away Evan Ingram, and I got Austin Hooper. Oh, oh. okay. Well, I try to make yeah. it sound good for you. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but anyways, Evan Ingram. I, I saw some crazy stat where I have a, a team Jared of has a knack just for losing trades. He does, but Where's I saw that playoff uh, appearance deck. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> okay. But not for this guy's breaking oh, Zach, up. In case anyone could tell, we're back with the home internet for Zach as well. So that might <laughs> cause a little bit of issue here. Um, but we'll get through it. Um, but yikes! I, I'd like to call it a little bit of turbulence, is what um, we're experiencing with Zach. But Evan Ingram, a team of just Evan Ingram, uh, would have beat like a team with like Nick Chubb last week, Stephon Diggs, all those top stars who underperformed. T Higgins. Um, T Higgins is another example. ETM. I mean, it's it's incredible how fantasy football works. Sometimes I mean, we're predicting these things, or even just football in general, we're predicting these things. We're predicting you know player X to have a big game over player Y and. You know, sometimes just reality hits. Um, the unpredictable part of football hits, and that's how it is. But, you know, I guess overall, week 14, how are you guys feeling? You know, I, I was feeling – like I had a pretty mild – you know, I had a pretty decent week in fantasy. And just overall, is football, Packers off, Colts off. We were just able to enjoy some games, I felt. Um, I kind of want to talk about that Sunday night game. I know Zach and I were going back and forth on it. Um. I the whole Justin Herbert uh, Tua thing. So I just want to make sure you you know what I think of Justin Herbert. I said he's a great quarterback. Herbert I, is a great I said quarterback. There's only, I said there's only two elite quarterbacks in the league, Mahomes and Allen, because Rodgers has been pretty bad this year. Uh, I said Herbert is a great quarterback, yes. I, I told you if he wants to be known as a great one day after he's out of the league, he's going to le- he's gonna have to at least make the playoffs. Like he hasn't done that in three years, right? So let's I, think. Jared, no, 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 hold on, hold let on. Let me just explain this to you. All right? No, Zach, Zach, no interrupting. Let, let's at least let's have, you've you've conveyed some of your points. Sorry, just let Jared give a little bit more context. So you go to the NBA, right? Who are the greats in the NBA? MJ, LeBron. You know they've never missed the playoffs. LeBron's rookie year, they made the playoffs, and they did they win the whole thing. They just might have. I know he had help around them, whatever. Tom Brady. Has he missed the playoffs? Uh, not really. Aaron Rodgers, how many times has he missed the playoffs? Twice? So is Tom Brady not an elite quarterback right now? And right he classified off for winning? Tom Brady's not elite right now. Okay. He's 45 years old. 44 years old. No. He's with the first, though. <laughs> is he? Um, no, my point is you can't call someone a great in the game if they've never won. Or, like Normally, you base it off of like rings, like, like Chris Paul... Charles Barkley, they're gonna get like smashed I'm on their saying, careers because like, the they don't have rings. NFL. When I say he's a okay. quarterback, I'm not talking about like the history of the NFL. I'm talking about right now. He's top five. He's talent. yeah. He's a, I mean, he's a great talent. He's a talented quarterback. But my point of like, if he wants to one day be great and be known as a great quarterback, not only does he doesn't need a ring, he needs to make the playoffs. Let's start there. That's what I'm saying. Like he's not even good enough to get his team to the playoffs. Yeah. 
Like LeBron carried a, a team with Kevin Love and you know, like He's all good. these. Jared, I'm, I'm, I'm to gonna stop you on the basketball um, can, analogies can... here because basketball is a five person sport. I mean, there's one guy, you know, one guy out of the five is gonna make a bigger difference than one out of 22 in, in football, basically, is what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna say right now. Um, I, I feel like Mahomes is carrying his team this year. But, yeah. you know, what? one quarterback, you know, one player doesn't define a football team as much as it defines a basketball team. I mean, you yeah, put LeBron on okay. any, any other team. Okay. I mean, so come Cam on. Newton, Cam Newton, one player carried his team to the playoffs. Almost I mean, won the whole thing defense. that year. They had... Well, every team has a defense. You're telling me that the, the Chargers don't have a good defense? Well, I mean, it's, it's a banged up secondary yeah, right no. now. It's a banged up defense overall. On paper, they have one of the best defenses in the league. You, have, you can't argue When that. healthy, you yeah. have. Yeah. Last year, their defense was dead last in the NFL. My point is, it's not just Herbert. Dead last. Austin Eckler is the top running back in the league right now. They have a solid receiving core, a decent tight end, and he has all those weapons, and he still can't win, like, finish off the games, make the playoffs. Like, you can't call him a great if you can't even, if you can't take that team to the playoffs. That's crazy. He's a great quarterback. You can't say that he's, like, amazing right now. Jared. He hasn't had all those weapons you're mentioning. They haven't all played since week like three, I think, or four, something like that. I know. Eckler's he hasn't had all those weapons Eckler's most been in all of the season. Yeah, but, you know, he's William, been, I, this the is the ball. first week, right? Isn't it the first week Williams and Allen played the full game together since like week three? I mean, piggybacking on what Zach said. Like, um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was early in the year. Um, also, I mean, if we really want to play the coach card, I know it's not a popular coach, the coach card, is it? But, you know, Brandon Staley is like head coach. Come on. I mean, you, uh, well, I, I certainly think it, that it should be looked at. It should be taken into account. Yeah, I, I, I'd, I'd go with that with Zach on that. And when Sean Payton becomes a charger next year, um, you know, as that's a, that's a horn Zach's been tooting for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep hearing. So, Jack, Jack I, hold on. I what, what, what did you have the Chargers at going into the year? 13 and 4, you said? Is that what you said? 13 4, 14 yeah. and 3? Uh, Something like that. I thought Brad Steelers was a lot better. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it turns out he had. So, yeah, they had a lot of injuries this year. Which uh, uh, JC Jackson missing a bunch of games. They've. I mean, Joy Bosa has been out too, so they've had a lot of injuries they've had to go through. But yeah, when Sean Payton gets there, they're uh, winning the Super Bowl twenty twenty three. So they have so <laughs> many, they have so many great names on defense too. Like you can't even tell me that they don't have a solid defense. I know they've been injured, but still, cool. Like they're. What do you mean, um, like who? Bosa? James they got is Derwin James. Derwin James, Asante Bosa Samuel. Not- You're cutting out. I don't know if I say he's a great name. Well, he is. He's a he's a well known player. That's what I mean. You know, like you said, J.C. Jackson's there. I mean, they have Jackson's solid... played terrible this year on the field. I mean, like oh, yeah. even if you look at PFF numbers, you know, he's been this has been his worst year statistically of his career, essentially. But um, you know, I I just feel like it's a tough situation right now for the. You know, for the Chargers, I think you certainly have to look at them as a a team with a very good chance to rebound in 2023. You know, in terms of like instead of this 500 record, they're like they're pacing at. Um, you know, I, I think you're looking more at like you know a 11, 12 win team, maybe potentially. Okay. So I saw something on uh, Instagram said out of these three teams, Chargers, Patriots, Jets, who makes the playoffs this year? And I think everyone will say the Chargers, Chargers. just be just because, but like. What have they proven that they they haven't proven they can make the playoffs? So why do people say the Chargers? Their schedule is so much easier than the other two teams. Their schedule is so much easier. Yeah, that, that, that's exactly why. If they don't beat, they could easily <laughs> win not through their last four games. Not sponsored. They could easily win these games, but Herbert hasn't made the playoffs yet, so I can't see him, that that team in the playoffs until they prove it to me. He's got what is back. <laughs> Okay, it's, it, we, you cut out Zach, unfortunately, but I just want to go back to the winning winning point, Jared. One more time, just just one more quick cl- clarification. So, mm-hmm. um, touching on guys like Jimmy G, you know, I mentioned those guys who might not put up the great stats. Jared Goff comes to mind. I mean, the, these guys. Um, mm-hmm. Do you consider them great, considering they've taken teams to Super Bowls? I, I guess what's what's your definition? I don't there? consider many quarterbacks great. I'd, I'd say they're both they're good quarterbacks that have the right system around them. 
and they know how to play with that team. I'd say there's like five. Top, the top five quarterbacks are great. Top two are elite. I don't think Jimmy G, I think he's a good quarterback, a quarterback that can lead his team to, to the Super Bowl and possibly win it, but not someone that's going to be the, the key piece of their offense that's going to, they're going to look towards him. He's not going to be the reason team. you win. Yeah. yeah. He's not going to be the reason They'll you do win. enough he for you to lose. lose. Yeah, exactly. That's how I yeah. look at it. Um, <laughs> Zach, you have any input on that? It's hard to see. Yeah. About the Dolphins, then. He's been high in the Dolphins all year. And he can call me a uh, a Tua hater, I guess. But every time they've played a, a good team and they have, like, a, a game, he's played subpar. That's just not true. But he said they are... Zach went through his stats last week. That's just not true, Zach. You, you're giving me two examples. You're giving me, a, you're giving me a primetime game against the Chargers in... Los Angeles that he played terrible in. Yes, that's one game. And then you're giving me against San the Bills. Francisco? Then you're saying the Bills against game? the Bills. San Francisco. San Francisco. Where's that one? It is Just last week. Last week. For the Chargers. Oh, sorry, week before. Yeah. He had 300 passing yards and two touchdowns. He had two picks. Yeah, but that's not terrible. <laughs> well, if you're turning the ball over, it's, I mean. It's not good, though. Well, I'm not saying it was good. He's saying, he's, two he's, he's saying he's played he's played awful against these teams. Jared, he, didn't he had two the... picks earlier in the game, and he got a lot of those yards once they're down multiple scores. I, I he played good against the Browns, you know, in week that was in week ten. But I, I guess you know I don't know what you consider the Browns. I mean, are the Ravens Average. a good team? Zach, are the Ravens a good team? 469 passing yards and, th- and six touchdowns? Yeah. I mean, you he can't just good, say it. Good you can't just week. point out a few games and say, uh, it's, you know, he's terrible. He's playing right. bad against bad or against good teams. You're, uh, the defense is that everyone is looking at that put the stretch in the middle of the year where everyone was kind of saying, uh, like, he's a good quarterback. He's made the turn. This is the defense he's played. Pittsburgh, which at the time, no JJ Watt, or TJ Watt, I mean, um, Naples, Chicago, Cleveland, Houston. Cleveland's defense ain't bad, and he threw for 300 passing yards and three touchdowns. Right? They have a pretty, that's probably the best part of their team, is their defense, besides their running back and maybe their quarterback now. But, I um, too good, though. They've been very streaky. I mean, against the Patriots. Very bad games. Against the Patriots, he went 23 for 33 with 270 passing yards and a touchdown. No picks. That's a solid game. Led his team to the win. I'm saying the only game I would say where he like won the game would be in Baltimore. Well, how about this? Yep. We'll see this. They play Saturday night in Buffalo. If he has a great game... Uh, hopefully he does. They're, I'm... they're what? They're gonna get smoked. I don't they think so. Eaters in LA when it was 55. Okay, and Zach. Going to Every... Buffalo that's... in the snow. Yeah, I, know. I think everyone's smoked. mentioned that multiple okay, times. Okay, Zach. But okay, <laughs> what about the Packer fans saying 49ers can't play in the tundra in the last year? If they... you're Miami Dolphins, they've proven they can. If you're Miami Dolphins fan and they play the best in 85 degree weather. Zach, do you trust that team going into Buffalo? It's twenty-five and <laughs> let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. Okay, so in the moment, they're they're sitting there in uh, fifty-five degree weather, and yeah, they're a little colder because they're fr- they're used to eighty-five, ninety degrees. What are they supposed to do? Oh, I'm cold, but I'm just not going to wear anything because I don't want to look like a you know like a wuss. Like, of course they're gonna they're gonna put like extra layers on. Like, they're not just gonna be cold on purpose. They're just not used to it. I mean, come on. Okay, yeah, but <laughs> do you think you can, from where they, when they played the full last time, right, it's very close. I think they'll keep it close. That was your question. You're cutting yeah, I think out. It was. I'm, I'm trying to decipher yeah. his message. But um, I can tell you what Tua did say about playing in the cold. Uh, his quote, you know, He's, or he's not concerned, basically, and his quote was, it's a mindset thing, basically, previewing Saturday's matchup. So, you know, it's hard to really say, right, 
the cold is going to impact. Like right now, the line for that game is actually Buffalo minus seven and a half, which you know, right? They're uh, they're the home team, uh, but um, I mean, I, I still think you know. It, I'm more worried about like the wind, right? I mean, how if it's going to be like a windy cold? Uh, we'll have Zach be joining us back hopefully, but you know, I'd, weather-wise, if we really want to like poke at that, yeah, the Dolphins are used to right. I mean, they're used to warm weather. That's when they play. That's that's where they play their home games. I guess. Yeah, I think these players have played on different teams too. I mean, it's not again. It's just not a quarterback game. I mean, the quarterback is the most important position, but the quarterback it does not decide necessarily the outcome of the game. So, mm-hmm. Jared, to kind of like credit what you say, right? I mean, like the Dolphins team around him, you know, has they, like great players have played, right? I mean, Hill, Kansas City, it gets cold. I mean, like mm-hmm. the, some of these areas, it, it gets colder where, you know, these players have played on different teams. They played in cold weather before. I, it... Yeah. And it's like not even the temperature thing. You said, you know, the players around them. I want to say Tua's been, if Tua's been that bad this year, then why is Tyreek Hill like, Top receiving right, top receiver right now. Jalen Waddle's top ten, like receiving yards on the year. I mean, they're they running have big backs plays shaky too. But yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't even look at Tua's rushing yards. He is mobile too. He has he's been a lot less mobile since his hit because he's more cautious. But I think it you, you're giving not giving him enough credit. The guy literally played for three weeks, was looking decent, was looking really good, then gets knocked out cold and is expected to come back and you know try to pick up where he left off. It's tough. I mean, the guy is uh, is fighting. He's trying to change the whole way he's playing because he has to get rid of the ball quicker now because he's worried about any additional head injuries that could happen. Um, just give him more credit than you're giving him. You're saying you just hate the way he plays. He's, he's not good. He's subpar. He's been through a lot this year. I mean, we can't just overlook that. He's been exceeding a lot of people's well, expectations. That was for Zach. Though. Well, it, it problem was, is you're arguing yeah. with Zach. I yeah. I just have a question. Are you taking Herbert or Tua right now, talent wise? Herbert, I'm taking Herbert 100. percent Okay, yeah, yeah, good. And I've never, yeah. I've never, I, mean, I don't have any discussion better than Herbert. Never, not once. I'm not that dumb. Not once in my life have I looked at the two and said I, Tua is better than Herbert. That's just, it's foolish if I'd say that. Well, and, and Tua is a step up. I will agree. Tua is a step up from those guys like Jimmy G. Right? I mean, mm-hmm. you gotta agree with that. It's just. I think Tua is at the level of, you know, Kyler Murray, I'd say, which again, we hope Kyler Murray gets well soon. Um, but, you know, I, I, I'd put him at that level. Is that a fair place to? I would say that, yeah. I mean, he's still on okay. his, what, third year only? I think third year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. He's young. He's got, yeah. He's got time to even improve, you know, improve on top yeah. of it. I think that's where I'd go. Zach, you back here. Uh, we're talking about uh, where you'd rank Tua in terms of quarterbacks. Yeah, 10 15. 10 to 15. So I put him with the with Kyler Murray. Yeah. Is where I'd put him. I'd put him eight to twelve. As of right now. More more on the, the ten to twelve range. Okay. Probably. Just because I mean he's young, he's improved a lot this year. Um before a few of these games, he was in the running for comeback player of the year. Most most improved player, if if anything, not comeback player. Most improved player. Um, I mean, he's he's exceeded so many expectations, and I don't think you guys. I don't. I don't know about you, Drew, but I know Zach's not giving him nearly the credit he deserves. Yes, he's had a few bad games. He's played subpar against good teams, but like, look at the Vikings. They've played bad against good teams, and they have a negative point differential, and they're ten and four, ten and three, whatever they are. Like, they get the job done. He's getting the job done too. Vikings either. He's okay. not in the Vikings, is what he said. Yeah, yeah. I got so, it. So, one more point I want to make about Tua. He has played, like, what, nine weeks this year? And he's, like, seven and two? Or he's played, played ten weeks and he's eight and two? He's lost two games. One was last week, and one was, like, two, three weeks ago. Like, he's he's played good. He's gotten the job done. That's something Herbert hasn't done. Herbert has played every week, and his team is subpar. They're barely over five hundred. I'm not saying Tua's nowhere near Herbert. Like Her- Herbert is way better. We clarified that. But Herbert can't win the games he needs to. Tua, I don't care if it's him, if it's his running backs, his receivers, his defense, they get the job done. And that's why Tua's looked at as such an improved player this year. There he goes again. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, 
Tua, if this Dolphins team wins 10 games like their schedule the rest of the year is pretty tough. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, they have the Packers on Christmas. Uh, whether you think that's a um, great matchup or not, who knows? Uh, but it it's tough because again, you know, a lot of a lot of Herbert's weapons injured. But at the end of the day, um, yeah, I mean, eight and five is a lot is better than is better than seven and six. So, and plus, mm-hmm. you're, as you mentioned, two missed some games as well. So, um. I think the other thing I wanted to really talk about was I got one more one more thing. I'll, I'll I guess just you and I here. I will roll. But for long term dynasty, you know, I'll, I'll throw fantasy football in here. Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, or Tua Tagovailoa. Who are you taking? Like three I next say, years. I want to say Trevor Lawrence. Um, he's fitting into that offense now. He's starting to get some chemistry with his receivers. I mean, I love Tua. It's okay. just concerning um if he continues to play inconsistent justin fields can't throw the ball he's a good running back um but i said is... fantasy football i, I fantasy mean, I've, I've... oh fan... okay well well then fields has a chance i would say trevor lawrence probably is the, the safe option okay so he's just well, so consistent and even with your lawrence ab- option before or your answer before you, you are properly rating Tua. i feel I, mm-hmm. I don't think you're under or overrating him. I, I was no. afraid you were going to come on here and overrate to it. And I was like, oh boy, this is going to be a treat. But no, you are you are because properly rating Tua. Let's remember, to start this year, to start the year, um, I had that Tua take saying he was going to impress a lot of people. We went on air like week five, week six. No, it was like week four, right before his injury. And we were like, Tua is impressing a lot of people. Wow, they're 3-0. and They just beat the Bills or whatever. I think, yeah, they beat the Bills. He was looking really good, and then he got hurt, and now he's had some bad games, and you guys are, like, going back saying, ah, he hasn't been that good. He's, you know, playing subpar against good teams, which is true. He's played bad against good teams, but, no, I still know he's not one of the best quarterbacks. I'm, I'm okay. still going to take fields over him in, in, you know, fantasy and dynasty, if it's dynasty. Well, and, I don't, and you I don't take know. Lawrence over him even in real life, looking at NFL yeah. rankings, correct? Yeah, Go. yeah. Okay. I've seen I, Lawrence I, top, I can top that. seven, top eight. I would I wouldn't say that high, but I'd say Lawrence is probably top ten. We're right like, now. like the next three years. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Um otherwise, I mean other huge discussion points, you know, for me was you know, we were talking about Lions being favored against the Vikings, and that was kind of a big deal, right? I mean, big deal Vegas had that. And sure enough, Lions, you know, they win. I mean, they, they cover too. On top of it, they win 34 23. I was kind of like, wow. I mean it was an impressive game for the Lions, too. Uh, you know, I think it was start to finish probably their best game they played all year, too, on top of it. I mean, they looked they looked good. You see uh, Dan Campbell's reactions to when yeah. they ran that last play? <laughs> Let's see. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, was, that was classic cool stuff there. Yeah. But I'm just wondering about Swift's usage still, too. I like Zach and I touched on last week where, you know, they're, they're trying to save Swift, right, you know, long term. But again, you know, he got like nine touches last week. It's really getting frustrated, frustrating. But like, you know, Jameson Williams gets the touchdown. Chark, I, I think, I, might was one of you two maybe? Did someone was someone starting Chark? Zach, you, Zach? No, I think. No, I was against Caden this week in in your league, and he was starting Chark, but then he subbed out, uh, subbed him out for Russell Wilson last second. Uh. I mean, I lost I'm just worried about Kyler Chark. Murray's, so uh, Kyler Murray got hurt and kind of lost me the week. But. But I'm I, like with Chark though, you know, there's a lot of mouths to feed in that offense. You know, that receiving core, which we touched on last week, is lethal. It's 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 it's, it's top ten right now. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, just looking at top to bottom, it's a talented group, of guys. I'm kind of intrigued what we sh- what we're gonna see there. And now with Williams back too, I mean, he had a touchdown, right? Didn't he have like a he had a long touchdown? Yeah, Williams had a touchdown. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but I, I still don't think you can start him yet, even if we're looking fantasy football. But you know, a lot like talent wise, right? If we're talking from a pure football perspective, they got the they got a good one who I think you know has the potential to surpass even a Monra. You know, I know it's kind of early, to maybe say that, but you know, I think the talent speaks for itself there. Yeah. Is there any, anything else I'm missing from 14 that you were like, wow, you know? Um, 
Not really. I just want to go over a lot some, of bye weeks. Some things that happened, as in like T. Y. Hilton goes to the Cowboys, kind of made me mm. sad. Not gonna lie. I mean, it's we knew he wasn't coming back too. to the Colts. Yeah, good. No, I'm happy for him. It's just gonna be weird seeing him playing for another team. I mean, it's the same as any trade, but not. I mean, not a trade, but when your player, when one of your favorite players goes to a different team, it's hard to watch them. Like with Adams, with you guys. I mean, I'm sure you weren't happy to to see him leave. But you're happy for the guy. I mean, unless you don't like Adams, I don't really know how Packer fans feel about it. I was fine. I yeah, I was happy for the return. Yeah, you know, again, the picks. Yeah. No, I just thought but, it was kind of weird because I just thought Ty was kind of like done playing, and now he's on the Cowboys and a contender though. You know, yeah, going know. a chance to make a difference. Mm-hmm. He ended up being their OBJ. You know, now yeah. OBJ reports coming out. He's not going to be playing until next year. Yeah, that's what that was another thing I wanted to talk about. I mean, OBJ, he said he wanted to play in the playoffs, but no, his, his health is a question. Do you th- I don't think a team's going to sign him. A contender wouldn't. OBJ, wouldn't no, risk. no, I, I think I think he'll be relevant for redraft next year. As like, this is a guy you don't know. Where, it's going to be like Michael Thomas, exactly mm-hmm. that. Oh. I think that's kind of the outlook. I am staying away from Michael Thomas next year. You are. You're. It's like after I took David Johnson that one year. Unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, like I'm telling you, talent though, <sighs> I'm still a little upset about that. But mm-hmm. you know, he, he was he's such a talented player. I just wish you know <laughs> you, injuries didn't didn't hit him the way they did. You picked him up a couple weeks ago, saying he's back, and then dropped him like two weeks later. <laughs> I, I I'm rooting for the guy. You know, yeah. how dare I? Um, no, I I seriously I know like Chris Moore. Like I I seriously am telling you guys. Um, <laughs> Nico Collins and. Brandon Cooks Brandon was Cooks, out. Yeah. Yeah. Brandon Cooks and Nico Collins were both out last week. Yeah. Uh, um, and both, they both do not practice on Wednesday. Chris Moore had 11 targets last week. Like, I mean, yeah. I'm just talking from a football perspective. Obviously, this guy's in a long term option there in Houston. It sounds like Cooks is going to be traded in the offseason. Collins, I think, slides up to wide receiver one. Um, I'm wondering, though, with the, with like the draft, if they, their team that gets another receiver, um, again, I'm hoping. You know, John Mechie, I, I wish him the best. I really hope he comes back and produces the way, you know, he can, right? So I definitely see... think they go quarterback. No? You do. Oh, yeah, yeah no, I, quarterback's probably the way to go. I'm sucking yeah. second round, third round. Second, okay. Well, yeah, then they maybe they, they boost up their – the, I don't know. They need, they need so much. They're 1-11-1, one, right? The 1-11-1. I don't, I don't like Pierce from a talent perspective. I'll say that again, Damian Pierce. Yeah. I think they're fine on running back. I mean, he'll be he'll he'll be okay at least for the next few years. Um, sounds, receiving yeah. core, they do need another receiver, but I think they need to boost up their line too. I mean, if they can get a solid base around a solid quarterback that they can draft next year, I mean, they could in a few years maybe compete again. But and they, Stingley, they so you know, has been. I, I they took him early. Remember, Lovey mm-hmm. Smith, um, being defensive mind. Yeah, I, question marks with the Texans, but I think there could be a good streamer there. And again, full disclosure, we did our draft before the episode as always. Now, yeah. Um uh Zach took Garrett Wilson, and I want to highlight that right. Um sounds like Mike White's playing, but that Lions Jets game, even line right now. First thing. Second thing, you know, Mike White with Garrett Wilson's been a, a duo, you know, to that that's been dominant. Um, but Corey Davis didn't play last week, and um look what happened with Elijah Moore, another guy. Um had, I think, yeah, had like 10 targets. Most targets he's had this year. Played well. Um, I'd be intri- intrigued to see how he operates. Like, it looks like he's going to be the number two behind Wilson if Mike White's playing. And I think there's a lot of value there, you know, with the talent Wilson has. Um, yeah. I want to see if we can get Zach back here. Um, I feel like he's but... just trying to talk, but it's not going to come through. Zach, you there? Maybe turn your camera off, Zach. Okay. Well, there he goes. But yeah, uh, we'll, we'll answer more of these questions when we get to like closer to the draft. Right? I mean, we'll have some of these questions answered for like holes, how they they go. Mm-hmm. Love our draft coverage. Really looking forward to that here. But um, I don't know. I'm thinking about like the big things. You know, that Giants Commanders game is like we talked about it last week. I know Jared, you were you were out, but we were talking about that. Game getting flexed. Were you happy that was the game getting flexed? I mean, what other options were there? Do you know? Mm-hmm. Was... Yeah, I'll, I'll give you them. It was Lions Jets was an option. 
yeah. which is kind of like you know two uh, mm -hmm. you know, around five hundred teams squaring off. Yeah. Um, another option was Patriots Raiders, which was like eh. Yeah. Bengals Buccaneers was another option. Okay. So like the options weren't great, but I kind of like this option. You do, and it, it makes sense. Two seven five and one teams. I mean, this has pl the most playoff implications out of all of them. Yeah. So I think I think one of these teams makes the playoffs and one doesn't. I think the team that wins this game will have the tiebreaker, and then there'll be like two full games up, I, or unless uh, unless division record is a lot different. I don't really know. Um, but well, right now, like of course, the Packers are paying attention. You need the Giants or Commanders. You need one of the teams to lose three of four. So yep. basically, if one of them loses, you know, you, you need the team who loses this one to be the one that loses out. Basically, that makes sense. Yeah, like, if the need... Giants lose this. You want you're, that's the team you're going to lose. The rest because like. Don't they need they need the Seahawks to lose two out of four? They need to win yep. out. The Commanders yep. need to lose three out of four, and don't the Giants as well need to lose three out of four? Commanders or Giants or Giants? Okay. Yep. So whoever's like two said, spots so up for grabs. Giants and... lose this game, then the Packers. The Packers just need the Giants yep. to keep losing. There's four teams for two spots, basically, is the scenario. If only the Packers would have beaten these teams, right? Oh, I mean, Jared, come on. If they if all they do, I mean, if they beat the Lions. They're they, I'm not going to say they control their own destiny, but, like, they have a lot more, you know, yeah. I mean, it's a full game. Yeah. I mean, if they have those tiebreakers, you, it's frustrating. I know. Mm -hmm. But um, we're rooting for the Jets this week. You know, I, I know I really don't want the Jets to win nine games because I know, imagine, Zach, it's going to be unbearable. But, yeah, you know, the Packers realistically want to make it here. Lions need to lose, go 6-8. and eight. Do they need the Lions to lose a game? Well, I mean, they, no, they play the Lions again. They do, Jared. But I'm saying, like, you know, what if the Lions are that team? Because the Lions are rooting. Like, I mean, there's they're yeah. another team that could sink in there. I mean, there's really five teams for two spots. I think of it this Packers way: either, from way Lions first. either way, the Packers need to win or win out, and they play the Lions. So I don't think the Lions could technically. If the Packers win out, the Lions won't make a difference. True. Yeah. You know, it's still a game where you want the yeah. Lions to lose, though. Nonetheless. Yeah, it would be cool to see. I mean, if the Packers ended up somehow making it, that'll be like, that'll be that'll be crazy. They're five and eight. They'd they'd go what nine and eight if they went out. Yeah, yeah. It'd, it'd, it'd be crazy. Um, that Thursday night game tomorrow night. I I'm wondering who is it? You know, it's Seahawks 49ers, and part of me is like, oh, 49ers, come on, how many scores they wouldn't buy? But then the other part of me is like, Seahawks back against the wall at home, you know. I know you took Geno Smith uh, to you know us to have some confusion, but Kenneth Walker's playing, uh, mm -hmm. you know. But how much? <laughs> how much? Debo's is he out. Playing? How much is Kenneth Walker playing? He's gonna play probably. He's expected to play. Yeah, but he was. I don't know. I I saw he was like earlier in the week, like yesterday or two days ago. He I saw I don't know projections, but one point in fantasy, like he was not expected to, and now he's like kind of just emerging late. I don't know how much he plays, and I don't think if you have him in, fi in fantasy, you start him even. It's just really risky. I think he'll be on. I don't know if he'll be on a snap count, but if uh, they might be monitoring a lot, him a lot. I, yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, I'm wondering though how Purdy plays though without you know without Debo. Um, mm -hmm. I, I took I take Ayuk because right Debo being out, I took him in player picks. Um, Helps me. I really feel and you took Kittle, so I mean yeah, I mean Kittle, yeah, but I have McCaffrey in my. Sixty dollar fantasy league, which I'm in the top four now this week. Our commissioner kind of messed it up. We started playoffs last week, which was was really weird because there was bye weeks still. Oh, that's happened. terrible! But I won. I almost put up the league like record. I put up 152 non PPR, which is crazy. I hurt Sanders, Kelsey. Kelsey only had like seven, but Pollard and uh, McCaffrey put up, had big weeks. So I think McCaffrey has a bigger week this week with Debo out. And they're gonna go to him a lot, and I need I need them to. So that'll be uh something to look for. I think I think with with Debo out, I mean, obviously we're praying for Debo, hope he gets better soon. Um I just think that McCaffrey's value is gonna go way up and Brock Purdy's gonna rely on him and Ayuk, like you said, and maybe even Kiddo. So I I like those those three this week. Yeah, I think that game is gonna be good for fantasy. Um and it's cool. Fantasy playoffs start again, as you mentioned. Uh I face Zach. In a league, First I face um, one. Oh, what? Are you, what seed were you in? Uh, Boston Scott League, six. I, I'm the last seed in. In Did two, I, of the, so I made the playoffs four? in. I think I got. Five, I don't know which one I? you got. Um, basically, um, I made the playoffs in three of six leagues, which 
fine. Yeah. But um, I was the sixth seed in two of them, and I'm the one seed in one of them. You're the one seed in Fantasia? Yep. Yeah. I'm the two seed, 12 and right? 2 right now. Are you? Did yeah. I go 11 and 3, or did I lose last week? I'm not sure. I mean, the playoffs actually start next week for it. It's a 10-team league. It's a little weird. So it's 16-17, because it's it's there's only two four. weeks playoffs. Yep, top four. Okay, so I'll be the two. You'll be the one. We'll meet in the championship. Ironically, that was the team I drafted the best. Yeah, you know, I have Jefferson. I have um, jo- and I have Joe Mixon were my top mm-hmm. two picks. Jefferson and, and Mixon. Up, I ended up getting Kelsey and JT. And I have Andrews. So like, um, yeah. I've noted, and that's a standard league. I should also add. So mm-hmm. I also have Christian Watson and Justin Fields. So I'm happy you know, in, I, your I league, up, though. in your league. I got a first round by uh, the new my league. Nice league. I no. ended up losing the one seed because I lost. Um, Robert Shimmick got the one seed, and Tyler has to play first first week now. Like it was me and him the entire the entire time. I was nine and zero, and I ended ten and four. So I lost four to my last five. You had, yeah, you had a tough stretch to roll out. Yeah. I think you know most are you know losing kind of that spot hurt, and then yeah. some other injuries kind of hurt your team there. But mm-hmm. yeah, I actually I took eleventh out of twelfth in that one. It was kind of a retail year. Um, don't worry about it. You know, I'll be better next year, but I did not take last. So I don't have to eat the spicy wings. That was what we did. We did the spicy wing challenge. So, yeah, you guys thought I was going to take last, didn't you? I mean, I heard a lot of people after that draft. I think that was my work draft. You you made before. trades. Yeah, it was. You, you, and you, you, you guys up- called me after and you're like, you know, Oh, give me these first, get first round pick for Alec Pierce. And, you know, I, I made all those trades and you guys thought I wasn't going to do well. You made trades to win you. You know, win the league this year, and mm-hmm. you know, you've got to be a favorite in that one. You and Robert, probably, yeah. The two. Um, I think I have how you feeling about next year, too, next year too? But after that, mm-hmm. I mean, I still have a solid team as long as Kelsey's playing, as long as these players are still in. You got hit some draft picks. Um, yeah. how are you feeling about Colts this week against the Vikings? Um, like how see, bad? I, th- <laughs> I I saw that ten and a half line against the Cowboys, and I thought like. That's crazy. I mean, we're gonna we have a chance to win this game, and it looked good until the fourth. Matt Ryan has shown me no reason to take the Colts in that game. I mean, being a Colts fan, it's just terrible. You see Matt Ryan just fall apart like that. Um, I think that the Colts are gonna lose probably two, three scores this week. Really? They play at noon against the Vikings. I don't. I know the Vikings don't put up all these points and they beat these teams, but. The I mean, Colts. I just, I just know what the Colts are, and they're not. The Colts. Team. Credit where credits due. They've been they've been fairly tough on receivers. I mean, they've been. Mm-hmm. They, oh, their defense. They, yeah, yeah. That's that, like, and Cousins has been proven. You know, if he has a bad game, this team could kind of you know. When Matt Ryan keeps the ball in his hands or the offense's hands, the Colts are good. When he turns the ball over and expects the defense to go back out there and just get another turnover and stop, it, it's impossible. The defense doesn't like really do so much. Do you? Yeah, yeah. There's only so much. The, there's only so much the de- the defense can do. Um, they get their stop, start the game. We get the ball. Matt Ryan leads them down the field. We score. Cool, good start. And then all of a sudden he'll throw one pick, and the defense has to go back out there. And then they score. And then Matt Ryan gets the ball again. And he, that's what happened last week. It just it's so quick. It happens so quick that if it all has to go like perfect for the Colts to win, I feel like if there's one mistake, like last week, Mo fumbled the ball. And it wasn't Matt, Matt Ryan's fault. He fumbled the ball. They returned it for a touchdown. There, we're down by 15. Then Matt Ryan throws three more picks to end the game. You know, it just so it was so bad. It falls apart so him, quick. Him in on a bounce back week, though. He said one good week this this year, and you think he had like what 400 passing yards that one game and like four touchdowns. Well, I, he's got more targets than he did in that like just, two weeks ago. He's not consistent. It's not someone you can rely on. And the sad thing is, think... is we have him for next year too, and we're probably going to go with him next year so that we Are avoid that about, whole. You're talking about Matt Ryan? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking about Michael Pittman. I'm talking about Pittman. I'll bounce no, back. no, 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 no. Pittman, yeah. Oh, I didn't hear you say Pittman. Yes. Sorry. Michael Pittman bounced back, didn't have good week against Cowboys because he didn't get a lot of targets. I think he's going to get more targets and is going to do great things with them. That's what oh, I yeah. He, I'm starting over Mike Williams in my um, $60 fantasy playoffs. So I hope that's the good, the right choice. I've never, I haven't benched him one time this year except for the. Can you throw week. me some of your tough start sits? I want to hear him. Yeah, I, I, sure. I'll give you mine too. Um, so I started Pollard and Sanders last week over Jamal Williams, and I have that decision okay. to make again. Jamal Williams or those two? You gotta um, start Pollard. 
I'm starting. Yeah, I think I start Pollard, and I I, I can't bench Sanders after what he's done the last. No, few no, weeks. you're starting Miles Sanders against the Bears. Oh yeah, you are. Yeah. Um, Colt McCoy or Baker Mayfield? Because now that Kyler Murray is out for the year, I need. I mean, I have Tom Brady. Thankfully, I traded for him. But I gave up first. So, why are you gonna start Tom Brady? Yeah, he'll be my quarterback, but I need a super oh, flex yep, quarterback. Yep, sorry. Um. Um. So, so those are two options. McCoy or um, Mayfield? Yeah. <sighs> okay. Um, I will tell you, you know, Packers have actually been pretty tough on quarterbacks who throw the ball, other than Ryan Tannehill. Yeah. <laughs> uh. So. Cardinals Bron- Broncos defense is better. Ooh. Yeah, you gotta go. You probably gotta go Baker. That's what I'm thinking too. I have Baker in right now. Um, yeah, I go Baker. I don't think there's a way that I start McCoy over him, but I mean, it just sucks. I wish we hate injuries, I, really do. Yeah, I know, I mean, and that Kyler one not just is for like, fantasy. It's, it's so unfortunate. Well, I just um, yeah. I, of course, again, we mentioned wish Kyler the best, but it sounds like it's gonna be out till you know it's gonna be 2024. We'll see him. You know, mm-hmm. I, it's gonna be the rest of the next all I mean, next year. Yeah, you don't know how long ACLs are gonna put you off. Torn ACL, it. right? Is what one of the worst injuries you can have as a player. Twelve to fourteen months, fifteen months. It, it's yeah. So mm-hmm. right now, Baker Mayfield is though the guy I'd ride with for you. Um, yeah. Just I just I can't believe Jared, your your two options have gone there. Again, I know. Well, I had I had uh, Jameis Winston to start the year. Um, oh, so you've gotten you. okay. I started off with Kyler and Jameis, and then I all the quarterbacks I have now. I mean, I picked up um, John Wolford when he was the starter for the the Rams. Now he's out with the neck injury. Yeah, you've he's just gotten injuries. PJ Walker, I started, and he was my super flex for a few weeks, and then I had Mayfield and Walker, and then Darnold gets put as the starter. I was like, come on! So now I had to start someone else. So injuries and quarterback situations moving around is costly. I also you. have yeah, I also have Michael Thomas on my team. He's been hurt. Now he's out the year, obviously. Um I just can't I, I still am just shocked though. Yeah. I mean that's why I went out and I traded for yeah, Mostert. I traded for Brady. I mean, I didn't want to trade. And that's for why you're one and I mean it makes sense why you ended the season so tough. That's mm-hmm. your quarterback options for a playoff team are um yeah. Not good. Yeah, I know. And that's that's Say it nicely. Partially my fault, partially not. I mean I sh- I could have not went with players that are questionable like Jameis Winston we didn't really know for sure that he was starting yeah chase on upside I don't, you know, you know well, the upside with Winston was you know big touchdown numbers at a six point by passing touchdown league mm-hmm. I get it um yeah, my start cool. sits you know it's my flex spot in a playoff league um it's I mean both my leagues actually where I play off matchups this week um it's basically um one of them is David Montgomery or Cortland Sutton okay or and then also in that is I I'm if Corey Davis is out I might start Elijah Moore if Brandon Cooks and Nico Collins are out again I might start Chris Moore. So I like the Chris guys. Moore. I know you were going to talk about this. I like the Chris Moore. I like Chris Moore more than Elijah Moore. I mean I started having I had Elijah Moore on my fantasy team. Uh, okay. And I dropped him like what six weeks ago because of that whole thing that came out where he was mad at his team and did he get benched? No, he didn't get benched. Did he? Wait for who? Elijah Moore, did he get benched or did he, he just not? Kind of. Uh, he just was. He was on the field. He wasn't getting targeted, so he's getting yeah. you know the Canarius Tony with New York treatment. Mm-hmm. But and with Mike honestly, White, if he's that injured and his ribs yeah. are. I mean, I don't really trust the start there. Okay, so yeah, I, I, I my other one is Donovan Peoples Jones, also in that flex spot. Okay, who big numbers? Uh, Browns mentioned they're gonna throw the ball deep more. I'm or, sorry, that, that's a, that, that's a different league. But going back to the Sutton Montgomery one, uh, right now I have Montgomery in there, but I'm willing to. I don't like Sutton. I, yeah, it's just hard you know, mm-hmm. with that. Uh, I'm debating basically between Montgomery and Chris Moore. I think if I think I will, and Montgomery's against the Eagles. I need to add bad mm-hmm. match. Jordan Davis is there. Um, yeah. If if Nico Collins or Chris or um, Brandon Cooks is playing, I plan to go Chris Moore. Or if they're not, you know, if they're both not playing, I'm gonna go Chris Moore. If they one of them's mm-hmm. playing, I'm gonna probably go Montgomery. But I'm also monitoring the Corey Davis situation, and it's just a mess there. Okay, and so then, now I see that Kenneth Walker is for sure like not even questionable. He's just in. Yep. So do I start him over Gibson? I think so. Do I also start him over? I mean, obviously, if Cooks is out, but Traylon Burks. He's projected almost 11, but he's also Burks is still in concussion protocol. Yeah, he's questionable. And it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. So, mm-hmm. if it was Monday, maybe I'd be like, okay, but 
It's, it's Wednesday, just, and he's still in concussion protocol. Is Fields playing this week? Oh, he's just sick. Mrs. Practice. Fields is sick. He'll be good. Um, yeah. my, okay, I, I got another one for you. So, base, I'm starting Pittman. We know that. Um, mm-hmm. I think, and I'm starting Peoples Jones. I mean, Brown, again, Browns mentioned they're gonna throw the ball deep more. Um, yeah. I've, I'm debating. Do I start Swift this week against the Jets? Mm. No, I don't think I don't so. Like that no. Um, but then my options are DJ Moore against the Steelers, who left okay. last week's game early, but is good to go now. Yeah. Um. And then my other options, um, you know, Jacoby Myers is one. Uh, Elijah Moore's an option there. Chris Moore again. Mm. Swift? I, I don't know. I don't. I can't go with Swift, can I? No, I don't think so. I I have Swift on my bench as well in this league, and I'm starting uh, Eckler and Camara over him. But Oh, I, yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Would you rather start Montgomery over Camara, though? That's my question. No. Nope. No. Kamara. Uh, Mark Ingram's out, Jared. Okay. Okay. Big, that, that's for me. That's that's the difference. Saints matchup against the Falcons. Awesome matchup against one of the worst run defenses in all football. Mm-hmm. Um, for me though, I believe right now. Who oh, do I have? DJ Moore. In? I don't. I, I think I do. If um, I were you, I'd probably just go Chris Moore. Chris Moore. I mean. I'm. I don't know. You. You. You like I these, started these that random one guys. You like these random players. That I do. Emerge and I'm against. You know, players. it's it's a tough matchup though this week too. Um, the guy I'm against has Dallas Goddard coming back from the IR. He's got mm-hmm. like you know he's got a good team. Yeah. So I, I think I'm chasing upside. Else you're talking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I would. I hate. It's so risky just going for Chris Moore on a on a winner go home kind of week, but. But that's all the options you got. I mean, you're gonna go with it. I, you know, I got Jacoby Myers too. Yeah, but there's so much there. I mean, Aguilar is there. Parker is he okay? I think I don't know if he's playing. He's Parker playing concussion protocol. Yeah. Thank you, Nelson Aguilar, for catching that. Mm-hmm. You see that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I think it's there's a lot like you always say a lot of mouths to feed there. Even without Parker, I mean, they still have Bourne Myers. Um, Aguilar, Hunter Henry. Is okay. There, if, it seems like there's yeah. a lot of injuries this past week. I mean, it really does. Are. It just happens. Ramondre, hopefully he's good too because um, definitely, you know, so for that team. He, did he – he got hurt, came back in the game, and then he was ruled out, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that was how it worked. I'm just okay. wondering, like, it looks like he'll be like, – he's projected to play Sunday. Mm-hmm. Sorry. That, I mean, that line's game, also even. Two even lines this week, Jared. How often does that happen? Really? Yeah. What do they play? Patriots Raiders in Raiders. LA or in in Las Vegas. Okay. And then it's the that Detroit New York Jets game. Mhm. I mean, okay, I think if we're talking wildly. game of the week, I would lean towards that that Lions game. The Jets need a win, Lions need a win to keep their season alive. I mean, the Jets lose that game and they're 7 and 7. Weren't they just 7 and 3 or something like that? Um, no, they the were Jets, six. Yeah, they've they struggled. were six, six and three. I think they won one of these mm-hmm. games. Yeah, they've, yeah, they've struggled recently. The Patriots got to them. And, and, so um, I'm starting to think if if Justin going back to Herbert. I mean, if if he if he wants to make the playoffs, I think this is this year's wide open for him. I think the Lions win that game against the Jets. I think the pay. I don't trust the Patriots. I, I don't. They don't have that solid of a team. They have a bunch of decent players that. I mean. They can they can break out like one week Aguilar will break out, but Mac Jones is I don't think he's he's good enough to get his team or bring his team to a deep playoff run. Um, so I think the Chargers do make the playoffs this week this year. Um, I just don't trust the other two around them. I don't know that that's my opinion. I I like the Jets going in, but now uh, with Mike White, I don't really know how that's gonna play out. Even with Joe Flacco, I don't. Not really sure that he well, can. Reese Hall for me is the big one. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. You know, Zach Wilson hasn't been the answer as, as you mentioned either. Um, but yeah, fantasy playoffs. I'm hoping for a win. I want I want the upset against Zach, who's the three seed. Oh please, please um, beat him. If he beats you, you won't hear the end of it. So, oh, I I know, I know. You're the. That's how we'll start three. next week's episode. Yeah. I'll yeah, I'll be doing the. I'll definitely be doing like this, and I'll go like this, and then I'll go like this. <laughs> and I'll spam that or something. I'll I'll do something yeah. funny. Yeah. 
Make him feel bad about it because I don't. He's yeah. been talking all year about his player picks and his fantasy picks, and about I haven't every, said, I haven't said nearly as much as I should have when my team was nine and zero. I should have bragged so much. Yeah, you should have. Uh, I did win player picks. I know. Uh, I, I, well, I did win player picks, and mm-hmm. yeah, Jared did. Still don't. We all tied. Hey, we tied. I, I just That's a win. That's a win. I want to mention this. Yeah, I'm not gonna go through all the details, but I do want to mention how we did go three and two. All of us did in player picks or team picks, but Zach went five and a week before, so he got the mm-hmm. win. Um, I also want to mention how Jared had the worst week ever recorded for so next segment, player picks. Um, 35.26, and every player played for him too. 13.66, 8.3, 3.5, 6.8, and 3. Pull it up, Jared. Oh. I, I don't remember exactly. Um, So I didn't, obviously, I was uh, sick last week, so I didn't really I didn't write them down, but I can look at the post. See if uh, you, you were sick should be the excuse. I was sick, yeah. So I had Dak Prescott, right? Jamal Williams coming off of a uh, a really big week, didn't work out. Stacked Dak with CeeDee Lamb, didn't that work was out the problem. again. Ramondre Stevenson got hurt. I mean, that was okay, you know, yeah. That's, that's that. Give me that, yeah. and then George Kittle. Uh, the team put up 35 points, he didn't get really targeted much. I mean, Evan Ingram basically would have had just as much as those points, if not more. I think he did. I think he had like 30, 34. 32. Yeah, you saw, I mean, I talked about the stat at the top of the episode, but mm-hmm. it's... I started him in, in Boston Scott League. Last week, he put up 39.2, so he would have had more than everyone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, 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 somehow, that's just unlucky sometimes. I mean, injuries... I had one injury, but still, 35 isn't... <laughs> <laughs> it's been it's better for week 15. You'll see again those posts up on the Instagram after sports crew. They'll be up tomorrow and Friday for team and player picks. And then, of course, our parlays will have Thursday Night Football up tomorrow morning for you. You can see what we're doing. If you want to tail along and take along or whatnot, and please go ahead. Um, otherwise, um, if you guys got any questions regarding fantasy football or anything, just reach out at your sports crew. We'll be answering. You can comment, of course, on the power rankings post, whatever. Definitely let you know if, we'll or if there's through, disagreement uh, with power rankings. Basketball power rankings, too. I saw your oh, the basketball power out. rankings. Yes, yes. <laughs> Ten of them out. Um, Jared was a little skeptical of the Denver one. You Just know, a few. Yeah, I mean, it's picky. One, one spot or something. Like Phoenix didn't play well last night either. You know, mm-hmm. they, the Houston beat them, I'm pretty sure. That was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't like the... I mean, I know we're not talking about basketball, but no, I don't like the I don't like the Suns really either. I think that they're overrated and well. they're all yeah. They're underperforming. But I just think the Maver or the the Nuggets were looked at as like top two in the East and now they're like number three. So I mean they're a little underperforming, but they're they're right there. You know. The thing for me, you know, maybe I I put Sacramento at ten. It was like No, they've been good this year though. They've been they, really they've good. been good to, yeah, I, I'm basing yeah. that one was more off of how they've exceeded expectations. It was more mm-hmm. of a reward on that. Um Yeah. Bucks, I think, are a good spot at two. I, I've seen some have the Pelicans over the Bucks. I'm like, come on, mm-hmm. you know, so young. The team is so Celtics young. still won regardless of their recent struggles. That come back in LA. I don't you know, think there's a. Hard. I mean, the Bucks and Celtics are one A, one B. I think Celtics have to be one A. They're just they've yep. just been better. I think but Christmas we'll see Christmas. Christmas. Yeah, we'll yeah, see Christmas. Christmas. Yeah, but we'll we'll have the Packers play that day too against the Dolphins, which we'll get into that game next week. Hopefully, we'll have Zach here, and hopefully, we'll be able to hear Zach. But I'm um, just Jared and I here again, and um, again, check out at True Sports Crew on social media for all the the posts, all this good stuff we're talking about, and. Again, that'll that'll wrap it up here for Jared Valeski and myself, Drew Skyberg, on this Wednesday night. Thank you all for listening to another episode of Drew Sports Crew, the journey to a million, the perfect podcast for you.